Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our friends and family around the world. I'm Philip Rappel, COO of FIDEN, and I'm delighted to welcome you to our next FIDEN preview, a virtual series featuring our authors in conversation with their editors. This month, instead of a FIDEN preview, we're hosting our very first Monicelli preview. Monicelli is the publisher of some of the most acclaimed books on architecture, interiors, and landscape design. Monicelli joined Fiden a little more than a year ago, and we are thrilled to welcome their authors and editors to our family. Today, I am delighted to introduce one of our upcoming authors, Lewis Miller, the celebrated floral designer, founder of Lewis Miller Design, and creator of the hugely popular Gorilla Flower installations known as Flower Flashes. Lewis will be joined in conversation with Jenny Florence, his editor at Monticelli, for an exclusive sneak preview of his forthcoming book, Flower Flash. It's been an exciting day today for Lewis and his team of Flower Flash bandits. As the first light arose over New York City, Lewis created one of his iconic and sumptuous flower flashes outside of the Cooper Hewitt Museum on 91st Street to celebrate the reopening of this important cultural institution following its closing during the pandemic. On top of this, we are also celebrating the very first announcement of his new book, which we are going to hear about shortly. Flower Flash, the book, will be available to the public on October 19th, but you are getting an exclusive preview today. As you will see, this is a gorgeous and poignant behind the scenes look at more than 90 flower floral installations made over a span of five years, inviting readers to experience these fleeting activations with never before seen images and photography. The book's collage like design reflects the spontaneous energy of the flashes, the dynamic spirit of New York City, especially the flashes done during the pandemic and the closure of the city and the many art historical sources from which Miller draws inspiration. For those of you joining us for the first time, here's how the event will run. Lewis and Jenny will speak for about 20 minutes, and then Lewis will respond to audience questions. To submit a question, please use the chat function on your screen. Thank you for joining our very first Monicelli preview. You're here today because you are among Monicelli, Fiden, and Artspace's most valued customers retailers, partners, authors, and friends. So without further ado, please sit back and enjoy this special preview of Flower Flash. Lewis, Jenny, over to you. Thanks so much, Philip. Hi, Lewis, how are you doing? Hey, Jenny, good, how are you? Good, such a treat to talk to you today on the day that you're officially announcing the Flower Flash book. Um, and we saw your flash this morning at the Cooper Hewitt was uh, beyond incredible, of course. Thank you. Um, I think it must have been a, about a hundred now, right? Um, yeah, so uh, right around it, that. You've done nearly a hundred flashes or thereabouts in nearly five years. Yeah. Uh, why did you want to make a book about the flower flashes and why now? You know, because it is when this book comes out in October, it will almost be five years on the date, on the dot. Um, hundred flashes, you know, having been through the year that we've just been through, it's time to take these flashes and collectively bundle them all up so they can be enjoyed. You know, they live for only a few minutes to a few hours in reality. They live in much longer in the social media world. Um, but I'm so excited to have them all, you know, put together in one collective uh, book so somebody can just see them you know, from start to finish, the whole the whole progression of the flash, as well as a lot of the behind the scenes um, bits and pieces that don't normally live on um, social media. And I feel like when you look, you know, recently when we've been looking at the book as a whole, it is like all these moments of joy combined into one book. And I'm really excited for people to get their hands on it in October. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that really struck me when we first met was that you came in with a really strong vision, a clear vision of what you wanted the design of the book to be like. Um, this kind of collage aesthetic combining, you know, you were in your team's images of the flower flashes with uh, historical artwork that we called from museums around the world. Yeah. Can you tell us what inspired that concept? 
Yeah, I mean, this that's it's really kind of I'm excited because like, you know, this book is really once you open it up, it's like getting into my head and how I kind of see things, you know, as a young designer years ago, that always caused me a certain degree of angst because I never felt like I had a very like straight aesthetic road. It's very much a hairpin process. And I like so many things and there's such a dichotomy. Like I, I clearly love the old world and the more classical, but at the same time, you know, I love the urban and the grit and the contemporary and the, and then, you know, kind of everything in between. And I often like to punch those two things together and see what happens. So this really, is a little bit of like scratching into my head and seeing kind of the DNA that is, you know, that is my business and my design aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but New York City is obviously a major inspiration to you. Um, it's almost like another protagonist in the book. Can you yeah. tell us how New York comes through in the flower flashes? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I moved to New York in 2000 and I grew up on the West coast. I, I, you know, I'm a farm boy and I love the countryside, but, you know, I love the energy that really is only New York. I've lived in other cities, but New York, as anybody who lives here, it's, it's one of a kind. And I very I feel very fortunate because I crafted as close to a country life in the middle of the metropolitan setting as possible. Um, but, you know, New York is this sliver of an island that is this great experiment. And it's, you know, it's cultures from all over the world that throughout the, you know, centuries have never coexisted but we coexist here and it's buildings that fly out of the ground one day and you go away for the weekend and come back and something's gone it's always changing it's always evolving you know the flower flash is is that as well it's i you know my approach to flowers in the flower flash is to be extremely democratic with flowers you know as much as we use the precious beautiful painterly tulips or the sweet peas the real workhorses and the things that keep the flower that you know elevate the flower flashes and make them work are the unfashionable flowers and i celebrate them as much those sort of garish you know uh, chrysanthemums and and um carnations and gladiolas and they're the hard-working flowers that support the more ephemeral precious blooms and you know that's a lot like the city of new york also new york you know it's such a graphic place you have you know we have so much visual stimulation around us, which as a designer and a creative person that excites me, you've got everything from the striped sidewalks to the Jersey barriers and the barricades and the smokestacks and the construction sites. And then you have a chain link fence and a graffiti wall. And then you have this on the complete flip side, you'll have, you know, next to it, a beautiful Stanford white building or some Belle Epoque style um, architecture or a monument or a statue. So, all of that is uh, great fodder for flowers, as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, I, the flashes, even though I've done a few in a few other cities, my heart really lies in New York. And I feel like they're the most successful in New York because of kind of all those things that I just mentioned. And that is the spirit of the city. Mm -hmm. So everyone is seeing some of the threads. And I feel like when we were putting them together, it was, you know, the director from Lewis was like, you know, find these graphic stripes from 18th century or 19th century prints, more polka dots, and then juxtapose them with the stripes of New York City sidewalks or these, um, you know, these orange and white steam pipes that are kind of a, a true New York phenomenon. Um, and it makes these amazing, these amazing kind of um, graphic clashes in the book that are really exciting, uh, that give you kind of an insider's look into, into I feel like the, the DNA is of LMD as you write. Um, and so having been a fan of the flower flashes for some time, when I began, you know, meeting with you and editing the book, I was so curious about the mechanics of a flash. Like yeah. how do you determine uh, the locations of the flashes and when you're going to make a flash and with which flowers, um, and then I finally had the opportunity to meet you and your team one morning, uh, a very cold morning in January at 5.30 a.m. to see you in action. And I was kind of blown away by how precisely um, you make the flashes, but just how quickly you construct them. So I'd love for you to uh, take us through the process of a flash from um, the scouting right up through the execution. Yeah, so 
the the idea was at the beginning, and I try to I try to adhere to this as much as possible. It's obviously been more difficult since the pandemic, but first of all, to reuse flowers that are left over from events, mm -hmm. give them a second life. So I do, you know, my my real job is doing a lot of nice posh parties for. Uh, fortunate people and you know we go through buckets and hundreds and thousands of stems of flowers and a lot of times they're just still so beautiful so it's like well here's a great way to you know reuse them um or i use flowers that are left over from the, from the flower market um if, if whenever possible it's very important for the success of a flash and i you know this has come through doing nearly 100 of them and having some trial and error um that it stays spontaneous, that it's not overplanned. Um, part of this is because, like like I said, in my real job, everything is sort of planned to a T and it can be a bit excruciating sometimes, um, every little detail. And this, to me, is kind of embodies the exact opposite of that. It should be spontaneous, it should be joyful, it should be guttural, it should be fast. I'm naturally a fast designer. I like, I like, I tend to do everything in my life a little too fast, whether that's good or bad, that's a different conversation. Um, so for me, and especially as a business person, you know, being a person who owns this business, a lot of times flowers, um, I get to do everything but flowers half the time. And so this is kind of my, you know, my passion project, getting me back into the kitchen, so to speak. Um, Location is everything, you know, um, Arini on my team, she has tens of thousands of pictures on her iPhone. And when it's time to do a flash, um, she'll pull up something that, or, you know, we're always, every time we look at the city now in a completely different way, it's like always looking at some, what everybody else would find weird. It's, it could be the perfect backdrop for a flash. We decide on the location. It's really about the time of the year, kind of the mood of the city, the mood of what's going on in the world. Um, and what flowers look really good. I try not to plan them more, you know, try not to plan them out more than three or four days, ideally. Um, <clears throat> I have to do a quick sketch just to kind of create the sort of vague design in my mind. I do that, but I don't want to be a slave to it. The mm -hmm. night before the flash, we load up the truck, we do some minor prep work. We load up the van the next morning, we get on site around 5.30 in the morning, depends on when the light is and pull up and sometimes we if we're working in a garbage bin we have to empty it which is also very wonderful to do in the first thing in the morning um but you know it's really let's roll up and just get it done because we don't seek permits or permission for these things they're a little bit uh a little bit gorilla um so it's get in and get out i like to make them as fast as possible the typical trash bin takes around 20 minutes um and then it's, after that, it's adios. And whatever happens to the flowers, whether people take a picture or take a flower, it's sort of, you know, if it lasts for an hour or four hours or gets picked over, it, it kind of is what it is. And then we go back, you know, a couple hours later to make sure we left it clean. And that's a flash in a nutshell. I love that. And I love that you do it um, mostly on weekday mornings so that people, so that, you know, regular commuters in New York city can stumble on a flash on their way to work. And if, you know, for, um, if anyone who has kind of rounded a corner and just found a flash, it is this incredible moment of, um, seeing this like stunning, uh, you know, natural beauty in the middle of New York city. Um, so unexpected and such a treat. Uh, you write in the book, that the flower flash has become for you, a noun, a verb, and an adjective. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, they're a noun because it's clearly, you know, flowers, a big, huge display on the, in a waste bin on the corner of a sidewalk is, it's a flower flash, you know, these, that's, that's what they are. They're these fast, fast displays in the middle of the city. They're a verb because they're fast, you know, it describes how the process, um, they don't last very long, like any sort of flash mob or a firework, you know, they're, they take, they're up in a few minutes and they burn out quickly. Um, and then they're an adjective because it's kind of made me rethink the way I, as a designer, approach floral design. You know, I like that spontaneity. I like that sort of haphazardness where, you know, it's the exact opposite of, say, doing a perfect photo shoot flowers where everything is so exact and you're moving everything with tweezers and then you're adjusting the light. Right. This is the antithesis of that, which is so much fun. 
because it's handful of flowers. It's, you know, it's, it's not perfect, but it's energetic and it's joyful. And so I try to like roll this process a little bit now into even my designs and save, you know, save 10% of this, this, so the flower flash as an adjective kind of for mm -hmm. serendipity to kind of keep that spontaneous. So not everything is kind of designed to death and it just keeps it a little, keeps the tension and makes it a little bit more interesting and more fun as a creative person. Right, for sure. Um, so backing up just a little bit, the first section of the book uh, opens with and focuses on the very first flash that you did in October 2016. Um, and you write that you were looking for a creative outlet beyond your corporate and private events and that you had been mulling over the idea of what would become the flower flash for uh, months or even I think a couple of years. <laughs> a couple years yeah. kind of, of like, you know, as we're seeing here, this giant um, arrangement of flowers in a New York City trash can. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're, but you're really waiting for the right moment to to make this first flash. And then it comes and you are in Central Park at sunrise. Um, you're a little nervous because you, you know, you, you're you not sure if you could be arrested for what you're about right. to do. Can you tell us about the lead up to that very first flash and uh, the day of? Yeah, so the flash is, you know, it had been a couple of years that in the back of my mind, I'd always been thinking like, there's gotta be something that would be completely different than what I do, the exact opposite. Like I said, I, I tend to be a creature of contrast. Um, the opposite of the posh, you know, ballroom would obviously be the alley or the garbage can, you know, and like, and to, to have flowers do something that doesn't necessarily make sense. It's just the, just because kind of thing. Um, you know, that combined with the fact that as business was going well and I'm getting, getting older as like, you know, I feel a need to kind of, how can I give back as an individual and as a business in a way that's meaningful? Um, you know, obviously I very much am a supporter of flowers and I understand the power that they have in one's life, but to bring them to a greater audience, um, uh, and to you, my, you know, to bring things that I see all the time that I have take for granted um, to a much, you know, my every everyday New Yorkers and fellow citizens. Um, and also then just to kind of push my creativity further a little bit, like to do something that I hadn't necessarily seen and stuff that maybe, like I said, doesn't necessarily make sense, but just see, if, see, see what happens. And so those three sort of channels kind of merged into one. That was long before you know, the word flower flash had ever been, you know, the term had been coined up. Um, you know, when the first one was done, they weren't even called flower flashes. I remember we sat around the table a couple days later and kind of was like, what are we going to call these? Um, but that first one was, that was the Imagine Medallion in Central Park. We had done a, uh, we had done a corporate event where we had done all those flower walls and the guys were dragging in these clear bags of all the leftovers the next day after they had done the breakdown. And it was these bright day glow dahlias and carnations that's all it was carnations dahlias and violet ultraviolet you know saffron ruby like intense clashing colors and they came in these clear bags and they were so beautiful and they were it was kind of like because they were in the bags they had created their own moisture and they had stayed fresh and like well now's the time we had this beautiful garbage let's do something with this so we ripped them open and we started to uh segregate all the colors and uh put them in different boxes and like what are we going to do so we whips out her phone and she's we start to you know go through the pictures of the city and found the, found the Imagine medallion. And it was the most simple flash because there were really no mechanics. You know, we loaded the boxes into the back of the van. It was just creating a very strong, bold halo, so to speak, around this medallion. Five o'clock in the morning, you know, <clears throat> a little nervous, not really, you know, is, is this kind of like, is this the most ridiculous, stupid gimmick, gimmicky thing I've ever done? Like I could be in bed right now. Am I wasting everybody's time? Like what, then we're like, well, what the hell, you know, worst case scenario, we're going to be sweeping it up in 10 minutes. And then we just right. all go back to work and go get some coffee. Um, so we put it together. Of course, uh, you know, you get the odd look from the jogger and the person walking their dog. And then the, the man rolls up in his little green cart from the park department with his broom. We're like, well, this is the end. Um, it was fun. Well, it lasted. But it was so sweet. They actually, like, very nicely swept around the thing. And then that flash ended up lasting for almost two days because it was cool outside and people rearranged the flowers and they turned it into a peace sign. And they plop their dog in the center and take a picture. So 
that was the first one and it was it was exhilarating it was a lot of fun um you know because we were decorating with flowers which i love to do but kind of making it up as we went along really and not mm-hmm. having you know I'm, I'm i'm in a business that's very exacting and this was quite the opposite I, lo- I mean, for anyone who's been following the flower flashes, for that first one to have lasted two days is uh, pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's become part of most of them now that, you know, New Yorkers can take stems and bring them home. And I know you love seeing um, the cycle of, a, of the flowers from an event to a flash to, you know, an Instagram, uh, an image of a, a vase in someone's apartment full of the flowers. Um, so it's it's crazy that it lasted for two days and it's... Um, that must have been such an encouraging and exciting start. I mean, obviously it launched, you know, hundreds. Yeah, it launched, launched the whole thing. And it was, at the end of the day, you know, I'm gonna be selfish. It was just a lot of fun. <laughs> it really was, it was quite a dopamine rush. So, you know, and I never stick around. I, we set them up and I hop back on my bike and I usually head straight to the gym or back to the office and like, that's it, what's the next one? Um, so when we did that one, you know, I think back then we had 3000 Instagram followers and. I was on my bicycle and I rode down to the studio and by the time I got down to my office, I think it had gotten like 200 and some likes, which might as well have been 10 million as far as I was concerned. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I was like, wow, this is, this people are responding. So that's, that's, that was the beginning. I, I love, um, you can tell in the book that it, how much fun it was to make um, yeah. those first few flashes. And I love the story behind it. Um, I think now we're going to start taking questions from the audience. Um, so question one is from Julia from New York, who asks, what's your favorite flower to work with and why? Oh, yeah, well, it changes every month or every week. Um, actually, well, I've got this page right here. This the, the anemone, I would say, is probably the flower that I will have cover my grave, um, especially the black and white one that you'll see around the uh, sign here. Um, I love the black and white anemone. Um, it's a little tough to work with on a flash because it's so delicate, but you know it, it embodies all the contrast I like. It's 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 modern, it's old fashioned, it's uh, it's feminine, it's masculine. It can be kind of bold. It can be a little cheery with a dark center. So I, I'll, I'll I'll always narrow it down to the anemone. But given you know, give me a beautiful dahlia in the autumn and french tulips and street pear tulips and we're not i don't know it's 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 hard <laughs> i love them all <laughs> question from miriam she asks how does it feel when a garbage truck or passersby take it away um yeah i mean i have not been there for that i know there have been i love well i love it when passer buyers i like it when you know when my New York fellow New Yorkers take flowers, that's the whole idea. Um, I know there was one incident where we did a bin and the garbage truck. Uh, we didn't time it very well that day. They hadn't. We had got. We we installed it right before they had turned the corner, and there was a lot of begging and pleading I heard from the residents of the building and the neighborhood, um, mm-hmm. and arguing with the with the bin collector, which is their proper term. I learned that. Um, but I actually haven't. Yeah, it's a little heartbreaking, I think, if I had to see it in real life. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, that's the name of the game. They're a flower flash. It's not It's not this, it's, it's not something in a museum that's supposed to be precious. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. It's here today, gone two minutes from now. <laughs> and I, so there are a couple of spreads in the book where we have um, a bin collector posing next to the flower flash, uh, which I love. And also, um, in the acknowledgments, you thank the DSNY, the department, the New York Sanitation Department, yeah. because they do, um, you know, just pass them by sometimes, right? Yeah, they, they've gotten to know who we are, and we actually made it a trip down to their office. And actually, a couple of, maybe of last month, Manny, my driver, he always comes with me on the flashes, and um, he, he, a garbage guy went by, and he's like, hey, you Manny. He's like, I know you. So he, he's like, everybody's getting... Uh, we're all, we, we probably have headshots in the in the lunchroom at the okay. Department of Sanitation. There you go. Um, so here's a question mm-hmm. from Eleanor in Columbus, Ohio. She asks, the Columbus Museum of Art hosts an annual event where florists express their concept of a piece of fine art with flowers. The flower arrangements are displayed with the artwork. Have you done anything like this for any of the museums at NYC? Would that be of interest to you? 
I have not done that in museums. I've actually given, I have given some, uh, some demonstrations and um, speaking engagements at other museums that have done the same thing. I love those. I love seeing people's interpretation. I mean, you know, it's basically what I do with say a graffiti wall, um, but doing that with a Vermeer, you know, I think it's um, incredible to see that. I have not done that per se, like match the art to the, to the flower arrangement myself, but, um, I have seen that happen and I, I you know, I, I, yeah, sure, I'd be, I'd be into it. It would probably, mine would probably be the most abstract one out, out there. Some of them get quite literal and are really quite fantastic. Mm -hmm. Here's a question from Amy in Philadelphia. She asks, which cities are on your flower flash bucket list in the US and elsewhere? Um, which is great considering you just did London, so. Yeah, I just did London, so I have to scratch that off the list. Um, yeah, great question. Um, I would love to do Venice, Italy. I think that would be beautiful. Um, you know, of course, I love Paris, and I can't wait to go back. Um, New uh, the United States. Uh, yeah, funny enough, I have to say probably Chicago because I, I've spent such little time there that it's very. Uh, uh, I feel like it could use some flowers right now. Um, I've done LA. I don't know. You know, I'm real. I'm 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 game. I'm I'm, I'm I love to travel, and I love and I in the past couple of years of doing a lot of speaking engagements, I've I've so enjoyed getting out of New York as much as I love it and seeing the rest of the country, and that's been really kind of amazing and um, eye opening. And so you know, listen, I I do every city if I could. Well, so, well. Sounds like the beginning of a world tour or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, here's a question from several audience members. They want to know, do you have a favorite flash? And if so, uh, what would, sorry, and if so, why? And what was the inspiration? I think one of my favorites was just because it was just so weird and random was that one of all sunflowers in the middle of Gansborg Square. Um, and it was the day before I left for Tuscany for vacation. So I was definitely channeling some Italy. And it was hotter than Hades that day. It was one of those August days in New York where the air is so thick and it was just like, it was five o'clock in the morning and you're just like, everything's gross and sticky. And um, and that was kind of the first real construction. I think the first construction site flash and those and having those gates and those cones and stuff with just the, you know, the heads, the very graphic polka dots of the sunflowers. That was that was a lot of fun for me. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. I love you know, like I love I love myself a garland. You know, this goes back to mm -hmm. I think I was a Roman in a past life, a garland or a festoon, and whether it's the Three Bears in Central Park or Alice in Wonderland. So I tend to like that you know, that completely random, almost contemporary, like the sunflowers or the much more sort of classical, heavily festooned. It looks like it could have been carved, you know, out of the side of a building. Mm -hmm. and I feel like we have um, a really extra special flash in our spreads. The one you you kind of were influenced by Wunderkammer and did like like a coral um, and a banana wow. flower. That's pretty. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. That was that was fun. That was channeling like my cabinet of curiosities, like meets Tony Duquette kind of thing. Um, yeah. Um, so here's a question from Michael in Brooklyn. He's asking, what types of works um, have you been creating during the pandemic, and how has the pandemic effect affected your flashes slash inspiration? I. That's a great question. You know, I have to say that was so. You know, obviously. It was scary as hell March and April of last year for a variety of reasons, but also being a business owner and having a busy year and seeing, you know, the special event world and seeing everything just, you know, topple over like dominoes. But it didn't stop us. And, you know, uh, it was really an incredible experience doing flashes during the pandemic. You know, we, um, one of the first series, actually the first one was, um, was that spread that was a few, a few spreads back was this gray wall, um, in Soho, but then I, we did a four outside of hospitals and you know, it was cherry season. And, you know, I did, you know, in New York and when it's cherry season, every, every hotel lobby, every restaurant has just the most amazing arrangement of cherries, cherry branches. And, you know, Instagram is flooded with images. And this year we were having none of that. Like we had all these cherry branches and no, nobody got to see them. So we did four very simple flashes of just cherry. And I think maybe some lilac in there. They were the most uncomplicated ones we've ever done. 
and they were in bins outside of the hospitals. And the essential workers, it was where they were placed, so they really, it was for them. They walked past them. And the amount of the outpouring of gratitude and, and notes and letters that we got from that was so touching. And, you know, throughout the whole year last year, even the ones we had done years prior were suddenly really resurfacing to the top and going kind of hitting everybody across the globe. And we were getting dozens and dozens of letters in our inbox. And then I would come into the office once or once a week or so and collect the mail. And there would be a stack of handwritten letters. And somebody like even wrote us a check for 25 bucks for us to get coffee for the crew in the morning. And, you know, it was so, it was really very, very eye opening for me because, you know, a lot of times I don't necessarily see the forest for the trees. I do these things. I'm always, okay, what's next? On to the next. It's always go, go, go for me. And I enjoy it. And I, you know, I, I, when I do scroll through the comments and I see how much, you know, happiness it brings people, I'm like, you know, that's great. But there's always in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, when is this, you know, when's this gig going to be up? Like, when, like, is this, is this just kind of a, a dumb gimmick, you know, like, is it, a, is it a big joke? But I have to say during the pandemic, I, I had a kind of a real, realization that, you know, it kind of, it was eye opening that people do, it is actually, you know, I guess, feeding their soul, it's bringing, you know, a little ray of light to their life. And so who, who am I to, if I have this ability to do this, it kind of now, I think is my responsibility mm -hmm. for now, you know, to keep going. Um. And the book ends with, you know, a couple spreads of, of images from fans, um, you know, of themselves and their dogs and, and everyone, um, you know, with a smile. It's kind of amazing yeah. to see that feedback. Here's yeah. a question from CC in Baltimore. Um, she asks, do you personally enjoy gardening and do you ever use flowers you have grown yourself? I love gardening. I've been gardening since I was a kid and I love it very much and I have a for the most part, a very strict no cutting the flowers from my garden rule um, because I feel like I can't do them justice. You know, I, I they, they look so great in the bed. I don't necessarily want to lose lose them there and bring them inside. And then, um, I, you know, for example, I had the most exquisite last summer dinner plate dahlias. And it's like, you know, each dahlia was the size of my head and there was just a whole flock of these things. And I could not get myself to cut one because it looks so good with all the layers and of all the other, you know, surrounding plants that to take them away and bring them inside, I would miss them more in the bed. Now I do go and snip, you know, little bits and pieces to make a bud vase. If anybody's watched my videos, they know I'm all about these little bud vases. So that's that I'll, I'll glean from the garden, but I won't harvest from the garden. Very strict. Yeah. Um, do we have time for one more question? I'm looking in the chat. Oh, here's the last question. Beth asks, how many are on your crew when you do a creation? What's the sense of community when building, con when uh, constructing the flashes? So generally there are four of us. Sometimes it'll go up to more. I think this morning there might have been six of us, but it's it's myself, Manny, my driver. It's one of my designers. It's usually Tawana and uh, Marini. And Manny and I hop in the van. We go up. Tawana and Marini meet us in a cab. We clear out the space, and then Tawana and I will get started, and I'll just kind of talk her through the process and sketch it through, and every once in a while we're stepping back, and Manny is – like under our feet with the broom and it's you know it's all hands on deck and then we spray the spray and the stencil and we're out of there so you know it's fun because you know like Tuan and I have worked together for years and a lot of designers that I that I have whether they're freelancers or I've worked with in the past you know you you develop this relationship and they know your style and it's actually a very there's not a lot of dialogue that happens. You know, every once in a while there may be, you know, you can say a word or two and that other person instantly knows what what you're thinking. So mm -hmm. it generally yeah. tends to be kind of a fast and silent process. I know, you know yeah, what I you guys, it was, um, I could see, I mean, there was hardly any talking, but you were all working so closely together. Like you clearly did. Yeah, but we all knew what, like, what the other person was doing. So it was a very organic system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. I think that that was our last question. Um, thank you so much for speaking with me, Lewis. It was such a treat. I'm thank you. 
I encourage everyone to pre-order the book now. You can go to Fiden.com to, um, to pre-order a copy and it will be released October 19th. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, it's Philip again. Hi there. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Jenny, for such an engaging and entertaining discussion about the book and sharing the inside story about flower flashes. I know we're certainly looking forward to October 19th, the publication date when the book comes out. To our audience, thank you for joining this Biden preview. The event has been recorded and a link will be sent to you to replay and forward and share with your friends and family. So this brings an end to today's preview. We'll be taking the summer off, but we'll return in September with another spectacular preview with Virgilio Martinez, the chef and owner of the acclaimed restaurant Centrale in Peru, who will talk to us about his forthcoming book, The Latin American Cookbook. Until then, thank you very much and have a restful summer and see you in the fall. Thank you very much.